Everything starts somewhere, although many physicists disagree. There is the constant desire to find out where. Where is the point where it all began? But much, much later than that, the disk world was formed. Drifting onwards through space, atop four elephants, on the shell of a giant turtle, the great Atu. It was some time after its creation when most people forgot that the very oldest stories of the beginning are, sooner or later, about blood. At least that's one theory. The philosopher Didactylus has suggested an alternative hypothesis. Things just happen, what the hell? And so our story begins in Ankh Morpork, the twin city of proud Ankh and pestilent Morpork, the biggest city in Discworld. A city where magic is just another job and where the tower of art of the unseen university for wizards looms over all the dark, narrow streets. Our story begins on a midwinter festival bearing a remarkable similarity to your Christmas. And so, it was the night before Hog's Watch. And then, Jack chops down what was the world's last beanstalk, adding murder and ecological terrorism to the theft, enticement and trespass charges already mentioned. And all the giant's children didn't have a daddy anymore. But he got away with it and lived happily ever after without so much as a guilty twinge about what he had done. Which proves that you can be excused just about anything if you're a hero, because no one asks inconvenient questions. And now... It's time for bed. Susan? Yes? You know last week when we wrote letter to the Hog Father? Yes. Well, will he really come? And when's he coming here? Does it matter if you get the presents anyway? Yes. Well, if you don't believe in the Hog Father, there won't be any presents. Thought so. But while children everywhere sleep fitfully in the belief that a jolly fat man is about to deliver their presence, not necessarily everyone is entering into the Hog's Watch spirit, especially in a city where there is a guild for everything.
The doors are locked. The windows are barred. The dog does not appear to have woken up. The squeaky floorboards haven't. I really doubt that you are a ghost. And gods generally do not announce themselves so politely. You could, of course, be death. But I don't believe he bothers with such niceties. Besides, I'm feeling quite well. Hmm. Good evening. Good, Good evening, evening, Lord Downey. You appear to be a spectre. Our, Our nature, nature is, is not a matter, matter for discussion. We, we offer you a commission. You wish someone inhumed? Brought to an end. Our scale of fees... The payment will be three million dollars. No questions asked, I assume. No questions answered. But does the suggested fee represent the difficulty involved? The client is heavily guarded? Not guarded at all, but almost certainly impossible to delete with conventional weapons. We like to know for whom we are working. We are sure you do. We need to know your name or names in strict client confidentiality, of course. You may think of us as the auditors. Really? What do you audit? Everything. We maintain the logical order of the universe. I think we need to know a little more than that. We are the people with three million dollars. We need to know where, when, and of course, the location is not on any map, and we need, we need the, the task, task to be completed by sunrise tomorrow. This is essential. As for the whom, let, let us, us call him the Fat Man. But won't he be out on his rounds? Is this a joke? We have no sense of humor. There are some who say that this person does not exist. He must exist. How else could you so readily recognize his picture? And many are in correspondence with him. He would be difficult to find. You will find persons on any street who can tell you his approximate address. Yes, of course, but uh, as you say, they can hardly give a map reference. Even then, how would the fat man be inhumed? A glass of poisoned sherry, perhaps? You misunderstand the nature of employment. How do I misunderstand you exactly? We pay, you find the ways and means. How can I contact you? We will contact you. We know where you are. We know where everyone is. Wimpo? Is Mr. Tea Time still in the building?
Go away. I don't do that stuff anymore. Yes, Twyla. I'm afraid of the monster in the cell, Susan. It's going to eat me up. What, again? <sighs> Egos! There's a girl out here with a poker. <laughs> what are you doing? Twyla said she's afraid of a monster in the cellar, Mrs. Gator. And you're going to attack it with a poker, eh? Yes. Uh, Susan's our governess. <laughs> she beats up monsters with a poker. Actually, it's a very clever idea. My daughter gets it into her head there's a monster in the cellar. You go in with a poker, make a few bashing noises while the child listens, and everything's all right. Uh, is that what you're doing, Susan? Yes, Mrs. Gator. This I've got to watch by Io. It's not every day you see monsters beaten up by a girl. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Tea Time. Oh, Carter, just put it on the table over there, will you? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'll go and fetch another cup directly, sir. What? Your visitor, sir. What visitor? Oh, for when Mr. T... Mr. T time? It's pronounced Teatarme, sir. Everyone gets it wrong, sir. How did you get in here? Easily. I got mildly scorched on the last few feet, of course. The dog seems to like you. I get on well with animals, sir. I have a report here that says that you nailed Sir George's dog to the ceiling. I couldn't have it barking while I was working, sir. Some people would have drugged it. Oh. But I definitely fulfilled the contract. I checked Sir George's breathing with a mirror, as instructed. Apparently his head was several feet from his body at that point. That was all right, wasn't it, sir? It, um, lacked elegance. Ah, oh, thank you, sir. I'm always happy to be corrected. I shall remember that next time. It is about the next time that I wish to talk. As a matter of interest, how would you go about inhuming this Gentlemen. You don't have to worry, she always wins. Very well done. Very psychological. A clever idea, that, bending the poker. I expect you're not afraid anymore, eh, my girl? No. Yeah, very psychological. Susan says, don't get afraid, get angry. Oh, yeah, thank you, Susan. And now, if, you, if you'd all like to come back into the uh, parlour, I mean the drawing room. That's convincing the way she bent the poker like that. Have they all gone, Twyla? Yes, Susan. Good.
that's what we do to monsters. Now it's back to bed for you, my girl. Difficult, sir. Certainly. But I have devoted some time to it, sir. You mean you've actually sat down and thought out how to inhume the hog father? Why, yes, sir. And the salt cake duck. And death, sir. They're imaginary creatures. Makes it a challenge. I suppose I just see things differently from other people. We may be able to see the complaint of Sir George's estate against you with regard to his dog rather differently and approve your graduation to full membership of the guild. Take the dark, sir. Wear black, sir. If you agree to undertake this contract. With due elegance, of course. With elegance guaranteed, sir. Uh, Mr. Tiataime, you have actually applied yourself to a study of ways of killing death. Only as a hobby, sir. Uh, but then some people might say that he is technically immortal. Everyone has their weak points, sir. Six. He's not coming. Let's go. Sit down, will you? Assassins are always fashionably late. Because of style, right? What's this? You never said anything about him being an assassin. It's tea time. He's paying top rates. We can wait for top rates. Tea time? I've heard he's uh, mental. And he's got a funny eye. Oh, I don't understand this. How long has this place had waivers? Good evening. Do have another drink while we wait for the other members of our little troop. someone in a pointy hat. Mr. Sidney here is indeed a wizard. A student, anyway. This is my brother Banjo. This is Chicken Wire. I didn't want to come. Mr. Sidney's down on his luck at the moment. Hence his willingness to join our little venture. So what's the job? We don't do jobs. We perform services. And the service will earn each of you $10,000. No one said anything about there being magic in all of this. Do the voice on it! Do the voice on it! No! Not the voice! 
Hit it on the head with the poker. Not the poker. This is a friendly warning. Understand, because it's Hogswatch. Why? A witch or something? I'm just... something. Now, you won't be around here again, will you? Or we'll put your head under the blanket. It's got fluffy bunnies on it. Fluffy bunnies? No! Go away and stop bothering me. That wasn't as much fun as the one last month. You know, the one when you kicked him in the trousers. Just go to sleep now. Locks. We have a locksmith. Who? Mr. Brown. And you can help me carry this. It's rather heavy. What is this? This is my brother, Banjo. Does it do tricks? No. He can lift two men up in each hand by the necks. Uh. <laughs> it looks like a volcano. Really? I do so hope we're going to be friends, Mr. Medium Dave. It really hurts to think I might not be among friends. Then I suppose we might as well make a start. Nothing valuable, you know. Nothing valuable. Only a few bags of teeth. I know. My name's Tia Tormi. What's your name, sir? Ernie. Yes, Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, gentlemen. This is my friend, Ernie. He's going to be our driver for tonight. Put her in the back, Banjo. Uh, uh, mister, I ain't rightly allowed to carry passengers, you know. Charlie would give me a ride selling off. Oh, don't you worry about that. We're all friends here. Our mum said no hitting goals. Only bad boys do that. Our mum said... Shut it. Shh! Ernie here doesn't want to listen to our troubles. Where to, mister? You know the way, Ernie. Behind the Unseen University. Where the students of magic are still hard at work on the night before Hogswatch. It's just a shame we don't have any radiation shielding, Burton. You want radiation shielding, Mr. Stibbons? Advice from Hexbursa. As the university won't supply our students with a thermic particle accelerator, we've started to build our own. The safety first, all that. Have you seen the head of the advisors of the Applied Magic? I need some urgent advice. Uh, ask the uh, Chair of Indefinite Studies. Um, Lecture in recent runes. Where does it all depend? Uh. 
I don't know. In my day, when I was an undergraduate, I wouldn't have been studying on Hogsworth tonight. It's just not natural. It's hard to have been sick twice by now. <coughs> <coughs> Bursa? Bursa? Uh, the Dean. Oh, there you are. Our Chancellor. Members of the faculty, I've decided, as a Hogswatch present to myself, to open up the late Arch Chancellor Weatherwax's old bathroom. <laughs> so I don't have to sluice down with you fellas. It's unhygienic. You can catch stuff. Here. I can't take you lot through the wall. Listen, Ernie. Ernie, you will take us through. Or, and I say this with very considerable regret, I will have to kill you. But if I not taken you through the wall... What's the worst that can happen? You lose your job. Whereas if you don't, you'll die. Really, Mastro, I think this is most unwise. They said in the plans it was a bathroom. You chaps are all acting in it with some kind of torture chamber. Bathroom? Designed by bloody stupid Johnson? <laughs> the late backhoe Stuckley Johnson was the worst inventor in the world, Arch Chancellor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but not everything you've made had a horribly fateful flaw. Oh. I mean, think of that thing they use in the kitchen for peeling potatoes, for example. You mean that thing with the brass plate on it saying, improved manicure device? Mm. Yeah, it's only water. Uh, mm. Even old Johnson can't do much harm with water. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you go to it, lad. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, it just chucks it at the wall there, and it goes twing. Really? May I try? Oh, isn't it nice, our David? Yeah. And then you just drive forward. Oh, yeah, right. Quick mind, because it only stays open for a little while. Thank you very much, Ernie. Very much indeed. <coughs> Wasn't he dull? Supposed to be getting rid of the hog father. Why is he going to the Tooth Fairy's castle? The, the Tooth Fairy, fairy are another, another childish belief. Exactly. Very, Very elegant. It is. You have to start somewhere. Once you have their little minds in your grip, it's goodbye, hog father. It's him. I give you a hand? Oh, yeah. Uh, here, your fingers are half cold, mister. Sorry. What do you want to go and do that for, eh? I did what he said. Could have killed me. Yes. I always keep a nip on me these cold nights. Keeps me spirits up. Indeed. How am I going to explain all this then, eh? Sorry? That was very rude of me. I wasn't paying attention. I oh, said, what am I going to tell people? Letting some blokes ride off from your cart and eat as you like? That's going to be the sack for sure. 
Well, at least I have some good news, Ernest. And then again, I also have some bad news. So, I'm dead then. Correct. Now tell me about these blokes who stole your cart and killed you. Honestly, death gets worse and worse. He seems, seems to like humans. So illogical. But the beauty of the assassin's plan is that he can't interfere. But death can go everywhere. No. Not quite everywhere. Great job, but you look a right tit wearing these helmets. Tia, tell me. What's yours? Albert, something is not right. the mythological person's room. How can one of them die?
Sie mich zu Snape, weil es mir ist. Questions first. Babbo. Later. Now, Miss Butler, I'd like you to think of me as a friend. How are we doing, Mr. Murdo? Takes a fool and I've stoked the boilers, Mr. Rodge Charlton, sir. You did read the sign on that door, Red Cully. You mean the sign which said, do not under any circumstances open this door? Oh, yeah. yeah. Till it was sealed up for a reason. Oh, they only wrote that to keep people out. Yes, that's right. That's what people do. But don't say I didn't warn you. My chief, that's the ticket. I still haven't worked out all the pipes, Lee. Oh, we'll find out. <laughs> don't you fear. <laughs> And the pumps, Mr. Wodo. <laughs> or a dwarf, of course, in your case. <laughs> She's a tooth fairy, but she is not the tooth fairy. Shh. What do you expect in a tooth fairy's castle? I guess I'm the creeps just thinking about it. You don't have to think. You just have to do what I said. All of them. Every last one. Put them in a pile. Well, that's millions. Mr. Brown. I want you to unlock every door you can find. He believe in things like the soul caked up, the Sandman, the Tooth Fairy. Yeah. Even the Hulk Father. Because after we're finished here, not even he will. Wash off in a thousand years. <laughs> oh, even if I'm going to have the mother of all hangovers in the morning. And how can the hogfrog bring all the presents to everyone all at the same time? Unless there are lots of hogfathers. 
Look, you've always believed in the Hogfather, yes? Yes. Well, if you don't believe in him, he won't come down the chimney. It's a very small chimney. And a very small stocking if you don't go to sleep. And, um... Ho, ho, ho. Hogswatch. Any mustard? They're a treat with mustard. Apple sauce. Finding the beard a bit of a trial. Well, at least it's keeping you in the right frame of mind, Master. Big character, that's what I think. But going down the chimney. Where's the sense in that? It's got to be chimbley's, isn't it, eh? A bit like a beard, really. Do you think these little buggers would be right to someone who could walk through walls if they knew? Oh, and that reminds me. The ho 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 could do with some more work, if you don't mind me saying so. Ho ho ho. No, no, no. No, you've got to put a bit more life in it, sir. Uh, no offense intended. You've got to do a big fat laugh, sir. You know, like. 
Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. See? You got a sound like you're pissing brandy and you're crafting plum pudding, sir. Give your pardon, my Kalachian. Really? How do you know all this? Well, I used to be young myself once, sir. Surprising as it may seem. These teeth give me the creeps. Just keep going. Why are we pulling them all up? You don't want to know. Quicker all the teeth are in the pile, quick we're out of here with our money. No one ever laid a punch on Banjo since our man died. Tough but fair, your man. You know, I recall that time she strangled Glossy Vaughn with his own leg. Yeah. Maybe the both of us could creep up on him and... Uh... Yeah. about that glass eye watching me. I keep thinking it can see right in my head. Don't worry. He doesn't know what you're thinking. No, how do you know? You're still alive. These damned eyeballs are hard, aren't they? They're walnuts, not eyeballs. <laughs> you back in my life, understand? Don't say you haven't been warned! Ah! Warned? Ah, did you check the list? Couldn't really make head nor tail of it, to tell you the truth. I don't normally care if they be naughty or nice. Ah -ha. I can feel belief in the hog father fading. What's that? It looks very bad. No, no, it's just where something's been nibbling it, that's all. I mean the situation. I fear we may be too late. Oh, well. Never say die, master. That's our motto. I can't say it's ever really been mine. Because if the Hogfather still comes to town as a result of a magical misjudgment on your part, then you will no longer be my friend, Mr. Sidney. I understand, sir. Do you have a lot of friends, Mr. Sidney? Um, quite a few, actually. I don't have many don't seem to have the neck. On the other hand, I don't seem to have any enemies at all. Well, it's a very enemy-friendly spell, sir. That is very simple. And we'll make the pile of teeth very... Mr. Teeshine! Dangerous. Grandfather, this is Hog's Watch. It's supposed to be jolly with mistletoe and holly and other things ending in ollie. It's a time when people are meant to feel good about things and eat until they explode. A time when they want to see all their relatives. I mean, it's a time when humans are really human and they don't want a, a skeleton at the feast. Especially one, I might add, who's wearing a false beard and has got a damn cushion shoved up his robe. I mean, why? 
Albert said it would help me get into the spirit of the thing. This is a real job. And I was looking forward to a real hog's watch where normal things happen with normal people in a normal house. And suddenly the old circus comes to town. Well, I don't know what's going on, but you can just leave right now. Albert. Buggery. Master of stuff. The pixie. Oh, oh, come along in, do. If the real hog father doesn't turn up soon, there's not going to be enough room for him. He won't be joining us. So what have you turned up for? And if it's for business reasons, I will add, then that outfit is in extremely poor taste. The hog father is unavailable. At Hogswatch? Yes. Why? He is, let me see. There isn't an entirely appropriate human word, so let's settle for. Gone. Yes. He is gone. How can the Hogfather be gone? He's... Isn't he what you are? Anth... Anthropomorphic personification. Yes. He has become the spirit of Hogswatch. And while he's gone, you've taken over. That's sick. I see the girl writes in green crayon on pink paper with a mouse in the corner. The mouse is wearing a dress. I ought to point out that she decided to do that so that the Hogfather would think she was sweet, including the deliberate bad spelling. But look, why are you doing that? She says she is five years old. Seven. In cynicism, she's about 35. But why are you doing that? But she believes in the Hogfather. She'd believe in anything if there was a dolly in it for her. But you're not going to leave without telling me. And what are you doing here, Albert? I thought you'd die if you ever came back to the world. Ah, but we are not in the world. We are in the special congruent reality created for the Hogfather. Normal rules have to be suspended. How else could anyone get around the entire world in one night? That's right. I'm one of the Hogfather's little helpers, me. It's official. I've got the little pointy green hat with the bell and everything. <laughs> have you been good, have you? Now we must be going. Happy Hog's Watch. And, um, oh yes. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> It's a nice drop of sherry, this. You've actually been drinking the actual drink little children leave for the actual Hogfather? Oh, yeah. Why not? He won't be drinking anymore, will he? Eh? <coughs> not where he's gone. <clears throat> How many have you had, may I ask? Hmm? Well, I don't know. I haven't been counting. One million, eight hundred thousand, seven hundred and six and 68,319 pork pies and one turnip. Oh, yeah, well, it looked pork pie-shaped. Well, then, everything does after a while, doesn't it? Why are you doing this? 
I am sorry I cannot tell you. Forget you saw me. It's not your business. Not my business? How can you say... You wanted to be normal. Good night, granddaughter. Sleep tight. I know I shall. <laughs> Pardon. Of doors. I hope this is the one. This isn't the room we're looking for. Just taken here. Keep going, Mr. Brown. Susan will try to find out what this is all about, you know. Oh, dear. Especially after you told her not to. You think so? Oh, yes. Dear me, I still have a lot to learn about humans, don't I? Oh, I don't know. Obviously, it would be quite wrong to involve a human in all this. That is why, you will recall, I clearly forbade her to take an interest. Yes, yes, you did. Besides, it's against the rules. Yeah, well, of course, that's a shame, really, because she likes to break them, doesn't she? You might think I've already thought of that, but I couldn't possibly comment. Mm. And we have much to do. We have the Hogfather's promises to keep. Right. He's done something to the real Hogfather. Oh, yes. She's mostly human. Oh, good. Then can we go back to just concentrating on running the universe? Making sure that gravity works and that atoms spin? Yes. When there's not an atom of belief left in the world. And the Father is just the beginning. What are you looking for, Mustrum? <laughs> My father always said when you see a lot of people bathing together, the Ruka gnome is running around with his little sack. <laughs> Moto, any sign of the Ruka gnome down there, old boy? <laughs>
welcome home, Susan. You took your time. I don't do family reunions. Soul cake duck. Too fairy. The hog father. Grandfather, what have you done? This cushion is still uncomfortable. You're doing well, Master. Soot in the fireplaces, little footprints, sweet, cherry. The sleigh tracks all over the roofs. No, no, it's got to work. You think so? Oh, yeah. Oh, here's a little tip, though. Ho, 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 will do. Don't say, tower brief bottle. <laughs> oh. Really? Mm. So many chimneys. It would be so much quicker if I lost the cushion. Yeah, well, I mean, if we're going to give Susan enough time to succeed, the little perishers need to believe in you, Master. No, I mean the Hogfather. So you've got to look the part, Master. I tell you what would be really good to boost belief. Is a public appearance. Oh, I don't normally do them. Yeah, but the Hogfather's more of a public figure, Master. I tell you what, one good public appearance will do more good than any amount of letting the kids see you by accident. Really? And I know just the place. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, Albert, but that was a pune, or play on words. Ho, 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 sir. to ruin me. That's it. I don't mind the smell of the oranges and the damp trousers, but I ain't putting up with this. And he's not even doing it right. What? What's going on here, then? Hey, eh? Come on. Ah. 
Oh, you. You can call me Uncle Heavy. You're not a pixie. No, I'm a fairy cobbler, mister. Now just keep quiet. And what do you want for Hog's Watch, small human? This. The letters are all odd. Oh, so I suppose now you'll be wanting me words of occult wisdom. Uh, ethereal runes. The old father ain't human, after all. Uh, I suppose a bit of warm liver's out of the question. The second bill of this watch, I set my true love back. A nasty little letter. <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah. Oh. What's your name, man? Small time thief, are you? You ain't supposed to be able to see me. Well, I'm a wizard. <laughs> we can see things that are really there, you know. Oh, what's in this bag? You'll really wish you hadn't, mister. Oh, will I? What are you doing here, young man? Well, you know the truth, Fairy. Well, it's it's sort of like the same business. You mean you take things away? Not take away as such. It's more sort of bring. Ah, oh, like new teeth. Like a new Verrucas. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're him. I saw your piggy do away. No, oh, um... Good. And a great big... What do you want for Hog's Watch? She wants a... I want an army and a big castle with an active drawbridge and a sword. <clears throat> I think they're supposed to say thank you, Master. Are you sure? People don't normally. No, I meant to the Hog Father, which is you, right? Sorry. Yes, of course. <clears throat> You're supposed to say thank you. Thank you. And be good. This is part of the arrangement. Yes. Then we have a contract. <coughs> ah, Baruchas, eh? <laughs> Wish I knew why. You mean you don't know? No, suddenly I wake up. And I'm a Veruca gnome. <laughs> Strange. Um, anyway, amazing bathroom, isn't it? <laughs> it's even got a special pot for your toenail clippings. Special pot for your toenail clippings? Well, you can't be too careful. Get hold of something like somebody's nail clippings, hair, teeth. You've got them under your control. I mean, that's real old magic. Children of the world. Prepare to think as you are told. Mr. Sidney, your big no misjudgments magic moment. a sword. They're not meant to be safe. But she's a child. It's educational. What if she cuts herself? That will be an important lesson. Really? Oh well. It's not for me to argue, I suppose. 
And she doesn't want all that other stuff. She's a girl. And anyway, I can't afford big, posh stuff like that. I thought I gave it away. You do? You do? You don't! That's our merchandise! You don't just give it away! Hogwarts isn't about giving everything away! I mean, yes, you, you do give things away, but you have to buy them first. You mean, this is all free? It would seem to be. So, Mr. Skibbins, this, this thing's a great big artificial brain there. You could think of it like that. Of course, Hex doesn't actually think. Not as such, it just appears to be thinking. Amazing. You mean it gives the impression of thinking, but really it's just a show? Uh, yes. Oh, just like everyone else then, eh? Oh, I thought it came here for something. Oh, <laughs> Now, this little chappy is the Veruca gnome. It was just popped into existence to be with us on Hogswatch night. Being the most magical night of the year. Last year's occult rubbish piling up, I thought you chaps might like to check up on it, eh? The Veruca gnome? But it makes about as much sense as anything else, doesn't it? After all, there's a tooth fairy out there. Makes one wonder why there's a god of wine and not a god of hangovers. Anyone hear a noise, sir? Sorry, Arch Johnson? A sort of... Ding, 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 ding. Like a lot of um, ding, ding bells. Didn't hear anything like that, sir. Oh. Well, where was I? Um, oh, yes, well, I mean, nobody's ever seen a Veruca gnome until tonight. <laughs> I've never heard of me until tonight. And I am me. Well, then, um, <clears throat> we'll see what Hex can find out, Archchancellor. Good man. None of this is right. Everyone knows he's just a jolly old fat man who hands out presents to kids. He wasn't always so jolly. You know how it is. Do I? That's like, you know, industrial retraining. Even gods have to move with the times. You see, your old father was probably just your basic winter demiurge. You know, blood on the snow, making the sun come up. So there has to be blood to make the sun come up. Hmm. Well, it starts off with animal sacrifice, you know, and some big airy animal to death, that kind of stuff. Very folkloric, very mythic. Didn't stop at animals, neither. They had sacred kings, the strongest and the best. Died in the dark time of year to give life to the unconquered sun. And in a way, the Og father and then? And then some bright spark thought, hey, looks like that damn sun comes up anyway. So how come we're giving those druids all this free grub? The world moves on, and he's got to find a new job. So he started as an animal sacrifice to make the sun come up. Exactly, Mundo. And now he gives out presents. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the evening, Squire. I am Corporal Nobbs of the Watch, and this is Constable Visit, sir. I want you to arrest him. Arrest who, sir? The old father. What for, sir? I mean, he's sitting up there as bold as brass in his grotto. Giving away presents! Uh, not 
quite up to speed here, sir. I thought the hog father was supposed to give away stuff, isn't he? But this one's an imposter! You know, I always think that. I thought the hog father spends two weeks sitting in a wooden grotto in some shop in Ain't Moorport. <laughs> He had his busy time too, yeah, it's not likely. He's not the hog father we usually have. Oh, you mean a different imposter? Not the real imposter at all? Yes. No. Arrest the hog father style of thing. Yes. On hog's watch night. Yes. Or giving away present. <laughs> In front of all these kiddies. Yes! In your shop. You think that might look a bit bad? Difficult to see how it would look good, sir. Could you not do it surreptitiously? Oh, well, yes. Surreptition, yes. You could give that a try. You won't find me ungrateful. <laughs> mm. In Omnia, we call Hogswatch Night the fast of St. Ossery. But it is not an occasion for superstition and crass commercialism. I used to hang up my stocking every Hogswatch regularly. All that ever happened was my dad was sick in it once. I'm going in. There seems to be a, a, a thalmic surge from somewhere. It's as if something is, is, is triggering random bursts of stray belief. It's the expression on their little faces I like. Yeah, a sort of cross between fear and awe. They don't know whether to laugh, cry, or wet their pants. Yeah. <laughs> now that is what I call belief. Next. And what's your name, little... person? Nobby Nobs, Hogfather. And have you been a good boy, a good war, a good no, a good individual? Yes. So why isn't it working? Ah, the, the chore just got a bit scuffed. You know, when we were piling up the, the things. You sure that's what it is? Well, uh... What about the spell? Oh, that'll go on forever. Simple ones do. It's just a state change powered by the... the, the it just keeps going. Well, that's very good, Mr. Sidney. Because if the sympathetic magic doesn't work, you will find me very... unsympathetic. Uh. Yeah. What happened? What happened? It's disgusting. This whole business. It is the worship of idols. It's a genuine. Burly and strong in the arm. Double action. Triple cantilever crossbow with a polished walnut stock. And silver engraved facings. Aren't we going to arrest the imposter couple? You're foreign, washpot. I can't expect you to know the real meaning of Hogswatch. On the whole, I think that went very well, don't you? Yes, Master. And I think I've got the laugh working really well now. Ho, ho, ho! Yes, sir. Very jolly. Tomorrow morning, they'll believe all right. They'd better, because if they don't, then there won't be a tomorrow morning. 
So for the sun to come up tomorrow morning, the Hogfather has to be alive. Precisamente. But what if he's dead? And this was going to be your big morning. Such a shame. Pretty lights. Be thousands here. It's all this stuff. It's just paper. The title deeds for properties. And they're better than money. So if we steal them, do they become ours? Is that a trick question? Anyway, let's get going. He won't miss a few words. Gentlemen. We were just, uh, we were just piling up the stuff. Huh. <laughs> hmm. I know people say, I kill them as soon as look at them. And in fact, i much rather kill you than look at you, Mr. Lily. You're thinking the banjo's gonna help you. That's how it's always been, isn't it? The banjo's my friend now. Banjo was the heart of a little child. I believe I have too. Help him, banjo. As far as this goes, I really have no use for it. It's only pillow money. Something much more Interesting has become apparent. father is someone who rolls his own. Control. Control the inner child, and it'll even give you its teeth. And somewhere in this tower, you're gonna help me find someone who can use it. Who 
can use it to give me the world. So is he sent to take the money and go? Damn, he's a bloody stupid. Daddy? I say, it's not what you think. Yes, it is. Mr. Brown, there's one door you haven't found. Find the Tooth Fairy's secret room, and when he does, then just think what I can make the Kitty Winks think. One, that one or this one. <laughs> Happy Hogwash, everybody. <laughs> 